Typically, when you think about Pyongyang, you might picture this. Or this. Or maybe this. These monuments are integral to the city's aesthetic and that of the DPRK as a whole, commemorating everything from unification, to self-reliance, liberation, to revolution. These are the monuments of Pyongyang. So, full disclosure, Pyongyang has a lot of monuments. Like, a lot. And that's just Pyongyang. The country as a whole is peppered with murals, monuments and towers, commemorating everything from the leadership to engineering projects and military victories. So, we're going to focus on these. Pyongyang's eight most significant monuments. First, it's back to 1947. The 15th of August is Liberation Day in Korea, marking the anniversary of the Japanese surrender at the end of the Second World War. This date marks the formal end of hostilities in the Pacific Theatre, and marks the moment Japan gave up its control over the Korean Peninsula. The Soviet Union began their offensive against the Japanese positions in Manchuria and Northern Korea on the 9th of August, six days before the surrender. The offensive continued, beyond the surrender date, until the 20th of August, during which time the USSR's 25th Army liberated much of Northern Korea from the Japanese. Once the offensive was effectively complete, they established their headquarters in Pyongyang, having turned down the alternative, Hamhung. Situated atop Moran Hill in Pyongyang, today the site of Moranbong Park, is one of the oldest modern socialist monuments in Pyongyang and today serves as a symbol of the continued friendship between the DPRK and Russia. The Liberation Tower was constructed in 1947, two years after the liberation of Korea, to commemorate the role played by the Soviet Union in the dying days of the war in removing Japanese troops from Korea. The inscription on the front of the tower reads, in Russian, The great Soviet people defeated the Japanese imperialists and liberated the people of Korea. The blood shed by Soviet soldiers during the liberation of Korea has served to strengthen the bonds of friendship binding the Korean and Soviet peoples. This monument was erected to signify the gratitude of the Korean people, August 15, 1945. In 1961, Another significant monument was erected, just across the road from the Liberation Tower. This statue, depicting the famous winged horse Cholima of East Asian mythology, being ridden by a worker and a peasant, commemorates the Cholima movement, which began in 1956. In the aftermath of the Korean War, the government embarked on a mass movement to rebuild the country. The Cholima movement was a Stakhanovite movement, meaning the goal was to boost production and the economy through ideology. The statue, sitting on Mansu Hill in the heart of modern-day Pyongyang, is a constant reminder of the Cholima movement and symbolises achieving goals at Cholima speed. In fact, the word Cholima itself means 1000 V horse, D being a Korean unit of measuring distance. Standing 32 metres tall, the base is made of granite, whilst the sculpture atop the plinth is made of bronze and adds another 14 metres in height to the monument. Eleven years after the construction of the Cholima statue, a new monument was built on the same hillside. The Mansude Grand Monument depicted a grand statue of the President Kim Il-sung, cast in bronze. This 1972 construction was opened on the 60th birthday of the President, and has since been updated to include his successor, the General Kim Jong-il, after he passed away in 2011. During the renovation, the statue of the President was updated to depict him in later life. This may be Pyongyang's most important monument. Every major city around the DPRK has a statue of the president and the general at its centre. The exceptions being the city of Sanjion, near Mount Pektu, where there's only a statue of the general Kim Jong-il, 
and the city of Hwaryong, near the Chinese border, where the main monument depicts Kim Jong-suk, the first wife of Kim Il-sung. This is because Sanjeon and Hwaryong are the birthplaces of Kim Jong-il and Kim Jong-suk respectively. The Mansude Grand Monument is also one of three monuments in the country classified as Grand Monuments. The others are the Sanjeon Grand Monument near Mount Pektu, celebrating anti-Japanese operations during the 1930s and 40s, and the Wangjae-san Grand Monument, which commemorates the 1933 Wangjae-san Conference between anti-Japanese revolutionaries, and is built on the location of the meeting itself, right in the northeastern corner of the country. Locals often visit the Mansude Grand Monument on important occasions, like national holidays, or often on their wedding day, to lay flowers at the base of these 22-metre bronze statues. Ten years later, Pyongyang's most famous monument was unveiled, the Tower of the Juche Idea. The tower sits on the bank of the Taedong River, and commemorates the Juche idea. The word Juche translates to Ju, or master, and Che, or body. In this vein, the ideology promotes national self-reliance, and has been the guiding principle of the DPRK since its foundation. The stone tower is 150 meters tall, making it the tallest granite tower in the world, and is topped with a 20 meter glowing red torch, the symbol of Juche. The tower was completed to coincide with President Kim Il-sung's 70th birthday and, as such, was built with 25,550 blocks of granite, one for every day of the President's life up to that point. The tower is a major tourist attraction, with a small shop inside the base and an elevator up to a viewing platform at the top, which commands fantastic views of the city, especially Kim Il-sung Square. The Juche Tower and Kim Il-sung Square represent one of the city's three major axes. One, between the tower and the square. The second, here, between the Ryugyong Hotel and the ancient Potong Gate. And the third, between the aforementioned Mansude Grand Monument and the Workers' Party Foundation Monument, which we'll get to in a moment. In front of the tower, looking out over the river, is a statue depicting a worker, a peasant and an intellectual. The three pillars of Korean society, each holding up the tools of their trade to form the emblem of the Workers' Party of Korea. A hammer, a sickle, and a calligraphy brush. When you think of the Arch of Triumph, you might immediately think of the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. Well, there's another. Here, in Pyongyang. It's just as grand as its Paris counterpart, and slightly taller. After a series of potential different design iterations, it was opened at the same time as the Juche Tower, and is endowed with the same symbolism. The same number of blocks were used in its construction of the Juche Tower, 25,550, and the arch is also built out of granite. The Arch of Triumph, or Kaeson Mun, is 60 metres tall and 50 metres wide. You'll get a clue to what it represents when you stand in the shadow of this behemoth and read the years 1925 and 1945 emblazoned on the front. It was in 1925 when it's reported that the President Kim Il-sung set off from his hometown, Mangyongde, today a suburb of Pyongyang, and headed to northern Korea and into Manchuria, pledging not to return until Korea was liberated from Japanese rule. The second year on the arch, 1945, is the year that goal became a reality, as the Japanese surrendered and Korea was liberated. The arch is situated at the foot of Moran Hill, near the Kaeson Revolutionary Site, where Kim Il-sung gave his first speech after the liberation of the city. Kaeson means triumph, and so fittingly, the arch's name in Korean is Kaeson Mun, or Triumph Gate. It's accessible from Kaeson Metro Station, but you can find out more about that in my Pyongyang Metro video. In 1993, on the banks of the Potonggang in Pyongyang, another spectacular monument was unveiled. Located in Sosongguyok in Pyongyang, this monument was completed on the 40th anniversary of the end of the Korean War. The centerpiece is a large bronze statue of a soldier wielding the national flag 
and beckoning to his comrades. This is Victory Statue. Leading up to the centrepiece are another eight statues, each depicting military scenes from the Korean War. The entrance to this complex is equally beautiful, as visitors pass beneath a large marble arch and pass two soldier statues beneath red granite flags. Visitors to the monument these days might think this whole complex is just a grand entrance to the victorious Fatherland Liberation War Museum, the entrance to which sits just behind Victory Statue. However, in 1993, the museum was situated entirely on the other side of the Potong River. It was only in 2014, when the museum underwent a major renovation, that a new section spanning the river was built, incorporating the monument. With this in mind, each side of the monument complex now holds outdoor exhibits of damaged and captured US and South Korean military vehicles, as well as the USS Pueblo, a US Navy ship captured by the DPRK's Navy in 1968. It's easy to think how this monument could fade into obscurity due to the museum's expansion, although the huge statues and beautifully tended gardens aren't something you could forget in a hurry. We've already discussed how many of Pyongyang's most important sites sit along a series of axes. The most impressive of these is no doubt the axis between the Mansodé Grand Monument and the Workers' Party Foundation Monument. Located in eastern Pyongyang in a dense residential district, this monument was completed in 1995 to commemorate the foundation of the ruling Workers' Party of Korea. The monument consists of three stone hands holding tools. As previously discussed, these tools, a hammer, sickle and calligraphy brush, represent the workers, peasants and intellectuals, the foundations of society in the DPRK. The words emblazoned on the front read, Long live the leader and organiser of the victories of the people of Korea, the Workers' Party of Korea. Behind the monument itself are two red buildings, designed to evoke an image of red flags, capped with the phrase, Baekchon Baeksung or 100 battles, 100 victories. Until recently, the line of sight was uninterrupted between the Mansudé Grand Monument and the Workers' Party Monument. However, in 2020, the decision was taken to build the Pyongyang General Hospital in front of the monument. It has been said the decision was made to emphasize the importance of the hospital to the people of Pyongyang by placing it on this significant axis. Finally, we reach the 21st century, with the construction of the Arch of Reunification in 2001. Officially, the monument to the three charters of national reunification, this huge arch was built to commemorate the reunification proposals developed by the President Kim Il-sung, known as the Three Charters. The arch is 30 meters high and just over 60 meters wide, and depicts two Korean women wearing Choson Ot, traditional Korean dress holding the Korean Peninsula aloft over the road. This isn't just any road, it's the reunification highway between Pyongyang and the border village of Panmunjom on the Korean demilitarized zone. All tourists headed south to visit the military demarcation line will pass beneath this monumental arch, which is just as symbolic as the border itself. And with that, the list is at an end. Pyongyang is a city defined just as much by its past as its future. These monuments, whilst serving as fantastic tourist attractions, are more often than not retrospective, a chance to commemorate important events, ideas and people. Meanwhile, Pyongyang is growing and developing. For every Korean war memorial, there is a new modern street. The victorious Fatherland Liberation War Monument sits in the shadow of the Ryugyong Hotel, now fitted with an LED screen, which bathes the city in light every night. Pyongyang is both a changing city, as well as a city firmly rooted in its history. And so, if these monuments alone haven't convinced you to pay a visit, here are some honourable mentions to finish the video. The Fatherland Liberation War Martyrs Cemetery. Veterans of the Korean War are interred here. The graves surround a statue of a bayonet, around which a red flag is wrapped, with the Hero of the Republic medal emblazoned on it. The Revolutionary Martyrs Cemetery. 
the resting place for anti-Japanese revolutionaries. Each grave is topped with a bronze bust and at the top of the cemetery, a red granite flag. The Friendship Tower. The Friendship Tower symbolizes the Sino-Korean alliance during the Korean War. It was erected in 1959. Mansude Art Studio Statues. Two bronze equestrian statues grace the entranceway of the Mansude Art Studio, the country's foremost artistic establishment, responsible for designing and building many of the monuments on this list. Taedong and Potong Gates. Not strictly monuments, these ancient Korean gates once stood around the old city of Pyongyang. Taedongwon was built in 1635. Potongwon was destroyed during the Korean War by American bombing and was rebuilt in 1955. 